Hello my friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I am going to be playing around with a photo <laughs> surprise. Uh, but what I want to do, if you've been watching my previous uh, recent videos, I've been talking a lot about light depth in the new uh, fall release from uh, the Luminar team. And it's amazing, it's great, I love it. And it's really good at helping move the light around, craft the light, all those kind of things. And I find that it's simplifying my workflow, simplifying and improving my edits. Uh, and because it's about adjusting the light, I'm using it on really every edit that I do. And that's because every edit is really about the light. The other thing that I like to do a lot of is make HDRs because HDRs are about light. Uh, it often is confused with being about color because the colors can be so vibrant in an HDR, but really it's about light. So you might think, well, what an HDR does is balance out the light, give you this wonderful distribution of light, and it does. But using light depth with an HDR is a killer combo that just really is upping my results. I'm going to walk through that in this video. I'm going to start with these three photos here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight them and drag them to HDR Merge. I just want to check my settings, which is going to be me checking all the settings. Not really a lot of ghost reduction. And then I'm going to hit Merge, and we're going to blend this thing and edit this thing, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. This is my blended HDR. And as I said, HDR about light does a great job of giving me a wonderful distribution of light. But what I find is despite that, there's still some things I need to do to adjust the light. And light depth comes in really handy. Now, when it comes to light, I tend to, not tend, I do start with develop. If it's a raw file, I start with develop raw. After you make an HDR, it's a TIFF. So this is now called develop. But the first thing I want to do is actually uh, darken the photo a little bit because it is an HDR. It's right before a storm came in and rained on me. This is from Colorado, uh, my recent trip up there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's got some dramatic skies already. So I'm going to kind of play with the drama in the photo and make it look, uh, well, you know, the way I want it to look, which is going to be a little bit more dramatic. Uh, I've made some adjustments to the light. I also want to cool this thing off because I really like the play of the blue here. Uh, in those kind of stormy skies. So maybe something about like that, maybe a tiny bit of vibrance. I don't really do a lot of color work uh, in develop and then maybe a little bit of sharpening, but you can see already before and after, before and after. It's got a lot of pop already. I think it's looking good. And what I'm finding with light depth is that sometimes I'm using it right after develop or develop raw and sometimes I'm using it after develop raw and super contrast. In this video, I'm going to be using Super Contrast Second. And it's some pretty simple and straightforward stuff where I'm just, again, kind of moving the light around a little bit because, again, it's all about the light. All of our edits are really mostly about the light. HDR is about the light. Light depth is about light. Super Contrast is about the light. So uh, it's a theme here, my friends. And uh, it's one that's really important because that's what we're really doing in editing is kind of manipulating the light. And, of course, the color. We're going to do that in this video, too, because... I can't really stop myself from doing that. I like it too much. But speaking of color and light, before and after, right? Before and after, you'll notice that the contrast has been enhanced just a little bit. Super contrast is great at giving me, giving me the ability to adjust contrast in these specific tonal areas. You will notice I skipped highlights this time. I didn't really feel like I got anything out of it when I played with it, but normally I do. Uh, but I also, in addition to adjusting the contrast, a byproduct of that is the colors look a little bit better and a little bit more punchy. So before and after, a little bit more vibrance to those colors because the contrast is essentially accentuating them. Now, this is where I jump into light depth, my new favorite tool. Absolutely love it. I mean, you've heard me kind of gush about it. And what I'm going to do here is I want to light up those trees because the sun was setting uh, behind the mountains behind me uh, and uh, actually kind of over to the right. And it was coming in and hitting those trees and it was lighting up those areas that are kind of brighter. And this is where kind of the fall color is residing in the photo. So it's already kind of yellowish gold and it's getting some golden light on it. And I want to pop that a little bit. Light depth is great at that. So I just want to move this up, find these trees, and I just found them. And I'm going to expand that a little bit. And you can see in this window, I mean, the mask is it's so beautiful and so precise. And it's doing exactly what I wanted. And because it's golden sunset light that's hitting those, the ability to drag this temperature as well and warm that up just saves me a ton of time. And that's what I'm finding with light depth is saving me time, simplifying my edits because... 
I'm targeted, uh, targeting specific areas with light adjustments, but also with temperature adjustments. So if you look at the before and the after, before and after, nice little pop there. And the other thing I like to point out, and this is something else I find that light depth is doing for me, is uh, in a situation like this where I've effectively got the center of the photo lit up with light depth, that means brightness near and brightness far are impacting the areas in black. Brightness far is the stuff kind of above and past the trees in terms of depth, and brightness near is the stuff closer, which is effectively the water. But because it defaults to this darkening, if you look at what's happening to the sky and the water, right, before and they're both uh, before and after, right, before and after, they're both a little bit darker, of course. It's kind of like a vignette. Uh, and um, because I lit up the center with the light depth, that's kind of like inner light on a vignette. So I'm finding that I either don't need as much or don't need a vignette at all in my edits. And uh, that's another thing that light depth is doing for me is kind of replacing the need for a vignette in some situations before and after. So now having done that, I've got a pretty nice looking photo. And I just want to do a few things to kind of get it going in the final, final uh, kind of phases. Uh, I'm coming in with Golden Hour to pop those tones a little bit more. Golden Hour is great at taking the stuff that's warm already, making it a little bit warmer. So I'm accentuating that warm light that was already there that I previously accentuated in the last tool with light depth. I'm giving it a little bit more umph before and after. And I actually use dehaze a tiny bit here, just like an eight or nine. It kind of cuts through a little bit. I kind of like it, but overall before and after, I think that's looking nice. And then I'm going to go into my favorite color tool, Color Harmony. And I don't really need very much here because it's already very colorful, but I'm going to do just a little bit. I'm going to take the warm tones and give them a little bit more warmth. Again, I'm playing up that warm golden light that's coming in from that fading sun. And then here in Color Balance, I'm going to add a tiny bit of blue into the shadows. That's creating a little bit depth, a little bit more depth or darkness, I guess, uh, in addition to the cooling factor in the darker parts, in the shadows, right? So what I'm doing is taking that blue, making it darker and cooler, and that's playing off or playing against or contrasting with the warmer yellow stuff that I'm accentuating. So I'm kind of playing those off of each other. And speaking of warmer stuff, I'm going to go into the highlights, and I'm going to take the uh, them and add a little bit of red, just a tiny bit of warmth. That helps a little bit in the sky area and all that. But if you look at the colors overall, before and after, before and after, I'm playing up what I call color tension, which is the color, the, the cool stuff and the warm stuff kind of bouncing off of each other because it's a good color contrast, right? The complementary colors, yellow and blue sit across from each other on the color wheel. So I'm playing up the yellow and blue here by darkening and cooling off the blue stuff, warming up and effectively brightening the kind of yellow or warm stuff. And Color Harmony is great at that. I'm also going to do a couple of quick things. Uh, structure, AI, I'm just going to do this really quick and simply, which is just get an object mask and grab the water and the sky and just smooth those out a little bit. It's so like a negative 35, 40, whatever it is. I just like to smooth that a little bit, and that's just a personal preference. Nothing wrong with a little bit more texture in the skies or water. Just my preference is to remove some of that and make it a little bit softer. But that's also because I'm a fan of long exposures, which... I didn't do here because I felt like I was going to get rained on, which of course I did. Uh, and then the last tool is really um, going into color and specifically the HSL section. And that's because this was a fall image. And with fall colors, I want to accentuate that a little bit and kind of lean into it. So I'm going to go into the hue of the oranges and I'm going to make it a little bit more kind of in that direction, a little bit more orange. And I'm also going to take the yellow and kind of go that direction as well. So all I'm doing is taking the, the oranges and the yellows and making them a little bit more orangey, for lack of a better term. And then the opposite of that is, uh, or the next thing I want to do is go into luminance. And what I want to do is actually brighten those a little bit. So again, this is playing into that color tension that I talked about, the cool and the warm playing off of each other. So here I've added a little bit more of that deeper, rich orange yellow to the oranges and yellows to make it look more fall-like, just a little bit. But then I also brighten them. So I took the orange and the yellow luminance and lifted it. And at the same time, I want to take the luminance of the green and I want to drop that a little bit. 
And that's because what I'm doing is taking some of these greens that surround these oranges and yellows, making them darker. So again, a little bit more contrast, a little color contrast in that area. So now you can see a bit more vibrant greens and now a little bit uh, less vibrant greens that are a little bit darker, creating a bit more contrast with the yellows and oranges. And so you can see that here along this shoreline with a nice reflection. You can see that up here and these mountains and of course that bigger section of trees there. And that, my friends, is a complete workflow of this photo. That's the base HDR. It's a nice, even distribution of light. That's what HDR does, and I like it. But using tools like Develop, Super Contrast, and of course, my new favorite, Light Depth, really gives you the ability to control that. And you couple that uh, those multiple light adjustments with, of course, some color adjustments to accentuate the, the color tones, the vibrance, the, the luminance, and the hue not to mention saturation, although you'll notice I didn't touch any saturation, but it, it gets accentuated with things like golden hour, for example. But you put all that together and you can really craft a compelling, compelling photo. But for me, it really comes down to the light adjustments, which is using HDR with a couple of tools like develop and super contrast, but very importantly, light depth to uh, you know, use those as effectively a secret weapon to come in and take a photo that looked fine to start with, and gives you a much more dramatic result overall. That's how I did it in this one, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how you can take advantage of these tools, craft your own masterpieces. Check out my free ebook for Luminar Neo down below if you wanna check that out, and I'll be back soon with more videos, my friends. Thanks for hanging out. I'll be back soon. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.